Welcome to the People Connect Podcast. Your network is your net worth. Are you ready to take your life to the next level? Be prepared to leap out of your comfort zone and connect with the who's who of what you want to do. Stop, drop, and roll as we start, market, and grow the CEO of you and your host, Nichelle Womack. She will help you engage, reinvent, motivate, and reactivate your plans for success. Everybody, how are you? Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. Happy Friday to you. I pray each and every one of you all had a blessed week, a successful week, a prosperous week. I know it's a little light here. I think the light is shining pretty good. So I am going to get started this evening. Uh, I typically do not come on on Fridays, but I just happen to have a little free time on my hand because it is extremely cold outside and I wanted to share some tips mm. about real estate my busiest time for real estate is on the weekend because a lot of my clients have jobs jobs and so majority of the time when i can show them houses is when they have free time which is in the evening time or on the weekend so tomorrow i'm holding a class um for a couple of clients that are purchasing a home and we're going to be talking about mortgages so i thought i'd get on and share this with you in advance before i share it with them and a couple of them may pop in i guess i don't know if they are in this network here but there are five things that you must understand and know when you are securing a mortgage for a property i've been a in real estate for about 25 years been a licensed agent for about 17 and a broker for about 13 14 years mm. and in the time that i have um enjoyed the career of real estate i've seen many different things happen in the industry some good some bad some like uh, will come back some will go away but overall i really enjoy helping people to secure dreams and that is purchasing a home because a lot of times people don't think that they can they don't know how they get confused with the process and it really starts because of a lack of education so what i um call to focus in my business that I ask my agents as well to share with the clients when they're purchasing a home especially first-time home buyers that they understand the process that clients in fact I have a form that my clients have to sign off on that they've been uh, introduced to the buying process that they understand the buying process if they have any questions and all of that because see my goal is first of all is to get a referral from you mm -hmm making sure that you're a happy customer and then that you will stay in your home and then when you decide to sell at home you'll call me as well so it's a lot it's a lot that goes into becoming an agent and helping to secure the dreams of people i don't take this business lightly at all because i know that some people can make it in the business and some people can't because you literally have to have tenacity you have to have the wherewithal to be out there working with clients who are certainly not sure about what it is they want to do and most people do not understand the process so today i am going to be talking to you about five things that the mortgage lender expects when you sign your name on that dotted line when they approve you for a property that you are expecting and hoping to buy the first thing that they always want you to be aware of is that that when they give you a loan amount that you are expected to pay it and that you understand that you have to pay it back that may seem so uh, simple but believe it or not people don't understand that and you must pay it on a regular basis when it's due most mortgages um, give you about a 15 day grace period not all of them most of them do, but they want that payment on the first because after the 15th, they end up charging you a late fee and that late fee can be horrendous. I've seen them anywhere from about one to about 20% on top of the payment that's due. So I always advise my clients, please never be late on your payment. And then if you are late, don't go past the 15. And then if you happen to see that you're going to be past the 15, you need to pick up the phone and call your lender. A lot of people don't do that. That's the first issue when you have a lack of communication and communication is so important in every area of business that you do in life and in business. And you have to communicate with the bank. The bank don't understand if you don't let them know what's going on. And so that's the first thing that I make them aware of is that you have to understand that your payment is due when they say it's due. And mm -hmm. typically it's on the first of every month, late on the 15th. After that, they charge you a late fee. So be prepared for that. Number two, that um, 
things that you need to know that the mortgage company expects you to know before you sign your name on that dotted line and receive that mortgage is that you will not demolish or remove the building. Again, that may seem mundane. That may seem like, oh, really? Who's going to do that? People tear things down. People burn stuff up, all kinds of stuff. You will be held liable if that is the case. The lender expects you to keep the house just as you saw it when you bought it and you signed your name on the dotted line to secure that mortgage. They expect, expect it to be at that same way. In fact, they will send their representatives out to look at the house on a regular basis. Sometimes it's more so depends on if you've been late on your mortgage, but they do a routine uh, visit somewhere anywhere from about a year to three years just to make sure that things are going well they also hire people like myself real estate brokers to go out and do bpos broker price opinion and that more so help happens when you are delinquent on your mortgage mm -hmm. but um the fact is is that they still hire us to go out there to see if the value has changed especially if your tax taxes increase or if they decrease then they call people like myself to go out to do a bpo to see what's going on in the neighborhood to evaluate the home and there have been times when I have personally gone by people's homes and their bank did not tell them and they were not happy to see me. And um, I had to explain to them that I'm here because your lender sent me here and some of them offer you access to their home and some don't. And if they don't offer you access, obviously, you know, you just respond back to the lender. Why not? Uh, or that they did not allow you access. And then the lender will take it from there. Sometimes they, you have to be escorted with by a sheriff to go there. So I've had different instances, more so when people are on the verge of foreclosure, because if people have been paying their mortgage, most of the time they don't mind allowing you to come in their home to do an assessment. Even as an insurance broker, we've had to go by and assess homes just to make mm -hmm. sure that they were structurally sound, that you've been keeping up with the house um, and making sure that there's really no issues within the house that the mortgage or the insurance company needs to be aware of. So that's number two. The bank wants to make sure that when you sign your name on the dotted line, that you personally will make sure that you do not do anything to destroy the property, remove it, or demolish it. My name is Nichelle, and I'm with 2XL with Nichelle.com. I bring you information, inspiration, and motivation to help push you out of your comfort zone and into your gifts that God has blessed you with. I am a licensed real estate broker, so therefore I am sharing this information with you out of knowledge, out of respect, and this is what I'm sharing with my students tomorrow. So I wanted to give you a little heads up before I did that just so that you can be aware as well. You can learn more about me and what I do by click clicking the link in my bio to excelwithyshell.com and you can see some of the plans and packages that I have available for small business owners. I also have a real estate class that's coming mm -hmm. up next Saturday. I have one tomorrow and then I have one next Saturday as well that's coming up and it's talking about investment property. So if you are interested in becoming an investor in 2018, you might want to be in the room because I can only take 15 I have 15 yet tomorrow and I have I can't remember how many I have signed up for next next Saturday but if you're interested in it go ahead and click the link in my bio and you can learn more about me what I do to help you expand dominate and move in your life number two as I mentioned do not demolish or remove the building number three the lender wants to make sure that if you default which means that you have not made a payment as agreed to the terms in the contract that you basically will be responsible for paying the payment, the interest, and the assessments that are due. The payment is the agreed upon payment that you agreed to pay when you took out the mortgage, the interest, anything that's tacked on to it. And then the assessments, there are assessments that are typically made upon, based upon uh, communities, uh, city assessments and things of that nature. So they want to make sure that if you were to default, that you will be held personally responsible for them, that not them. And if they take you into foreclosure, they're going to tack on their lawyer expenses, their expenses that um, they've paid on your behalf, as well as any late or neglected um, aspects of the home. So keep that in mind. You want to try to stay abreast of everything. And I always advise my clients, if you feel like you're going to fall behind, as I mentioned earlier, give me a call if you're afraid to call the mortgage company. I've had clients that say, well, Nichelle, I don't really, um, I'm afraid to call the mortgage company because I don't know what they're going to say. 
And I'm like, really? You know, and I understand everybody's not comfortable with talking with them. So that's one thing as a mortgage broker. And when I'm working with my clients, I assure them that I am your consultant in real estate as well. Now, I'm not an attorney, so I have to stress that because any legal aspects that come about, you know, you're going to have to seek an attorney. However, I do work with attorneys. I have attorneys and, um, you know, we work together to keep our clients in a home and then to make certain that they understand the protocol as it relates to being a home buyer and securing a mortgage because that mortgage is a lien on the property which means and I always like to tell people too because see people think that when you buy a home in this term is so misunderstood and misused when you buy a home that you own it in so many instances you and the bank own the home until it's free and clear and you have the deed in your hand the bank owns the home with you so it's like a partnership a 50-50 and that's just like any other business transaction. They want to make certain that they secure their interests in the property. And that's why their name remains on title, a part of the title, until you um, until you pay it off. I don't know many people that have paid their homes off. A few people I do. And it took them forever and a day to get mm -hmm. it paid off. Because most of the time people sign up for 30-year mortgages. And with 30-year mortgages, it take them 30 years to pay it off especially with interest compounded on there. I know when I was looking at my mortgage, I, I've, you know, I'm like, wow, this is all I paid, <laughs> you know, because that interest adds up on it. But I still do believe that a home is a great investment. I still do believe that when you own a home, you have wealth. Why? Because your home can become your bank. I truly believe that. And I share that with my clients. If you're going to get an investment, get something that will pay you back. Your home typically pays you back, especially if you're in a area that the appraisal value consistently grows now if you're in an area that's declining you may not be at in, in that advantage but if you are in an area that is consistently climbing and you see things around you grow build and develop that's the first sign that there's great um that's a great area when you see development and growth coming around then your investment may be on point mm -hmm. so just because the market right now i know i read an article not too long ago and it stated that perhaps maybe in 2018 people need to think about renting instead of buying and i was like that's the most mundane thing that i have ever heard because if you think about it if you look at any millionaire any billionaire out there majority of them own their home so why would they tell the average american that it's not smart to buy a house how crazy <laughs> but again that is the wealthy telling the middle class and the poor that you don't deserve to have that asset i truly believe that <laughs> yes so the next thing that I want to make you aware of <clears throat> that the mortgage company wants you to know when you sign your name on that dotted line is that you will keep insurance on the property. Now, a lot of times the mortgage company will add your taxes and your insurance into the payment. That's if you signed up for it. Some of them automatically do it and some don't. Mm -hmm. The number one reason why I see people losing their home is because of taxes. Now, where I'm from, in three years, if you do not pay your property taxes, they will put your house up for sale. Some areas I've heard is 10 years, some I've heard is seven. So you need to be abreast of the laws in your area if you're getting a mortgage and you own a home. But the bottom line is that when you include it in your payment, that takes that responsibility off of you <clears throat> because it's easy to get behind on your taxes. It's easy to forget your taxes, believe it or not. I don't see how because you know you owe taxes, but some people still forget to pay them and it gains interest as well. Your community will add taxes on there and interest and you'll end up owing more than you actually were supposed to pay. So it's really cost effective and beneficial for you in the long term to add that with your mortgage payment and ask and request that your lender do that. And like I said, some lenders do it, some don't. And you may want to ask them in advance. If you are just coming in and I can't see you, I apologize. I don't know who's in here or whatnot, but I am Nichelle with 2 excel with Nichelle.com. I am a licensed real estate broker. I assist people in purchasing homes, investments, and um, selling their homes. Once they have it, I do commercial property as well. I've been in the business of real estate about 25 years. In fact, this was one of the second businesses that I started when I graduated from college. Reason being is because at that time I was in transition and I lost my six-figure job real estate was really big at that time and believe it or not i was clearly clearly 
reading everything Trump related. <laughs> yes, I was just going through my, my library and I was noticing all the books that I had have with uh, him in talking about investment. He has some great tips in there. However, mm, another story there. But when I started in the business, it was um, one of the, I wouldn't say easiest transitions to make, but I've always been fascinated by real estate. I've always loved visiting homes. I've always loved decorating homes. That's one of my little side things that I do too. Um, I love decorating. I love beautiful things and um, home ownership and, and all that stuff and decorating people's homes. I don't do it as a business, but if someone asks my opinion on it, then I'll let them know. Um, and help them with it so kind of a passionate thing about that so that's one reasons why I went into real estate and it's actually one of the most lucrative businesses that you can get into especially if you are um, on the investment side and I always recommend to people because people always ask me well do I have to have a license in order to invest in property it depends on where you live um, for the most part no for the most part you don't have to have a license in order to be in real estate now, the advantage of being in real estate is that you learn a little bit more about it as in as an agent, as a, as a broker, but it's not a necessity for you to have a license in order to purchase real estate. In fact, I advise people not to. If you want to be solely an investor, I advise people not to do it because you have so many constraints being an agent and being an investor. I run into that myself all the time. I have to disclose the fact that I am a licensed broker before I even see any property, before I even write on the property or whatnot. So there are a lot of limitations with being licensed versus someone that isn't. Number five, number five, what your mortgage lender wants you to know when you sign your name on that line. Number five, if you foreclose on that property, you will relinquish all your rights. Now, as I mentioned to you earlier, sometimes lenders will call me out and other agents and brokers to go do BPOs. And again, people don't want to let you in their house. Well, if you have not made any payment, most of the time, mm -hmm. if you're three times late on that payment, a lot of states, they have the, the right to execute foreclosure on the property. Some states, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not sure about this, but New York, they can stay in there almost a year, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not for sure. But some states don't have quick turnaround with foreclosure. Mine is three. And they can execute it. In fact, most lenders can execute within 30 days if you are not paid up. If you're more than 30 days late, most lenders can execute foreclosure at that time. The chances of them doing that are very slim because they understand that some people may be late on their mortgage. But when you've gone 60 days they may waver a little bit 90 days that's when you will start getting activity actually at 60 days you'll start getting activity of the right to getting ready to go into foreclosure and the lender expects that you understand that if you're not paying your obligation that they have a right to foreclose on the property and you have a right to relinquish the property to them and that's everything i mean and i advise people when people are getting a home i advise them clearly Please read every detailed line that's on that contract. I can't tell you how many times people come to me and say, I didn't read that. It is your obligation and your duty. It's my fiduciary responsibility to make you aware. I'm not a lender. I'm not a mortgage broker. But as your agent, what I share with my clients is this is a requirement. I need you to sign off that you read this. Because for one, I'm not going to pay your mortgage. No. And number two, I don't want you coming back to me with the process of you having to go into foreclosure. I want you to be able to afford what you purchase and I want you to be happy with what you purchase. And I want you to stay there a while, at least seven years until or you have to move. So those are some tips. Those are five things. And actually, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. I'm doing this real estate class tomorrow for clients. And we're going to be talking about mortgage, the process of mortgage. Next week, next Saturday, I have an investment class that I'm doing and I've been doing those like this one is going to be online next week, next Saturday, February 11th. You can click the link in my bio to Excel with Nichelle.com and you can register for it there. You'll see it. I think it's like the third or fourth link in my bio up there and you can register for it. That one's going to be solely investment. 
where we're talking about how to purchase investment property. As I mentioned, I, that was the first thing that I did as graduating from college. I got into real estate as an investor, so that's where I started. And then from there, expounded into getting my license as a licensed real estate agent and then broker. So there is a lot to learn about real estate. And I must tell you, every day I learn something new myself, even being licensed, <laughs> even doing the business. There's always something new. Why? Because it changes on a regular basis. It changes changes on a regular basis. And if you secure property, investment property mm -hmm. with a mortgage, you really, really need to be there. We're going to go over a whole lot of different things, a whole lot of different things. And I bring this to your attention because as a woman, my goal for 2018 is to help a hundred women become successful as entrepreneurs, whether it's in real estate, whether it's in starting a brick and mortar. I too have been there with several brick and mortars throughout my tenure of business career of 25 years, or whether it's to start a business at home or online. I think women need to own. I think everybody needs to own something now. Um, I don't believe everybody's a business owner, but I think everybody needs to own something, some assets, some real estate, some stock, whatever. Everybody needs to own something. And so that is my goal to help ensure that women are self-sufficient in their lives. I run into so many women, black women in particular, that are not really financially sound that don't understand why they need to be financially sound. They depend on their husband. I'm a married mm -hmm. woman, 21 years, and I still believe in being financially sound just in case. You never know. And so my motto in life is always to be prepared versus being underprepared. Acknowledge your worth, know your worth, charge your value. It's as simple as that. So that is my message for you this evening. Thank you so much for each and every one of you all coming in and tapping the screen and sharing the broadcast. If you have any questions about real estate or business, feel free to DM me. I am on Instagram at Nichelle Womack and on Twitter at Nichelle Womack. And again, you can click the link in my bio to excel with Nichelle.com and you can learn more about what I do to help you. I am a certified business coach and I am a certified life coach with a BA, MBA and a dissertation away from a PhD, 30 plus hours in mental health, license in several areas of business as well. So I bring this information to you with knowledge, with experience and with excitement because I wanted to share it. All right. Thanks again for tuning in. I am typically here live Monday through Thursday, but unfortunately yesterday life got a hold of me. I got tied up with finishing up some uh, business as well as writing a chapter for my dissertation and I did not get the opportunity to come on so I thought I'd come on today but Monday through Thursday I'm typically here live between the hours of 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. Central Standard Time if you like positive inspiration and motivation to help push you out of your comfort zone and into your gifts that God has blessed you with connect with me Again, you can connect with me on Instagram as well. If you like podcasts, I'm also available at the People Connect Podcast, which you can download on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and on Google. Alrighty, until next time, blessings and peace. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.